Gina. Uh, I came across this piece back in the early 90s um, via the Gulbenkian Foundation in Lisbon. Uh, in those days, the Gulbenkian made up these fantastic editions. Um, they look beautiful, but sadly, I think some of the editing was, was um, well, wasn't of the best and finest quality. And that, for me, is why it's very important that we have fantastic new editions of these wonderful works. Sarajina, it, it struck me that it, this is a beautiful, sacred magical, and there's a lot of cavalli about it. Um, Melgas, of course, is a composer that is not known at all by the um, wider public, and indeed not known by mo most of the musical fraternity. Uh, but this is a very special piece. It's a very sensual piece. His use of the Latin text is, is amazing, and as I said before, it is very much a, a sacred madrigal. Um, wonderful for all types of chamber choirs to, to perform and also indeed consorts uh, to sing it sung by four solo voices is equally as interesting as having it sung by a full choir. I've known Sally Dagdy and Francis Steele for many, many years. Both of them were founder members of the 16. Uh, Francis I was at uh, Morden College Oxford with as a core scholar uh, back in the early 70s. But both Sally and Fran, because they have been uh, associated with so many wonderful groups over the years, not only the 16, but uh, the Clarks of Oxford and the Talis Scholars, their insight into performing this music has actually dictated the way they therefore edit um, music. Um, Coming from that background as a singer it is very, very important. Uh, they know what they want to see on a page. They, they know that they want to see a, a good translation, for instance, not a, a translation that's taken just off the internet and put into a publication. They want to see something that is you know, really going to tell us what a Latin text, if it be Latin, is all about. Uh, also, the whole layout of, of the music for, uh, for modern singers to to use, you know, far too often in the past, you know, we've had small print to work from and uh, you, know, you may be performing in a chapel where, they, where the lighting is very, very bad. You want something you can really read. But most importantly, you want something that you know is going to be academically really precise and the attention to detail that both Francis and Sally put into their works is really second to none. It's always a fascinating fact for me about 16th century music, just how much um, communication there was between Europe and, and England. And there's this most fascinating story about de Monte, um, who of course had been to England as a young child, but later in his life he sent uh, a motet over to William Byrd, his motet was Super Flumina Babylonis, uh, an eight-part motet, to which Byrd responded with further verses of that psalm, Quomoda Cantavimus. The other really interesting aspect of this was that actually de Monte was of course um, a Catholic living in a Catholic country where there was no, um, no sense of any recrimination. Bird of course was living under fear of his life every day, every day of his life um, due to the fact that he was a Catholic in a Protestant country, very much that recusant Catholic. So the fact of this piece being sent over de Monte that was all about Catholicism, about Rome, was and this cry uh, for, for, you know, for, for help for Bird and you know, de Monte recognizing the plight that Bird himself would be in is, is amazing. Bird's response, of course, uh, is, is absolutely staggering, this cry basically for Rome from a country that was uh, not really. 